would like to thank Eugenia and Bonaventura Clotet for organizing this wonderful meeting. And after the wonderful talks that we, uh, that we saw today, uh, this one will, will be more clinical and, uh, and it, it, I will try to, to recap for you the, the, the current knowledge we have in regards to switching strategies. These are my disclosures. And uh, first of all, uh, there is a say that says, uh, don't, fix, don't fix anything if it's, if it's not broken. So if a, if a given antiretroviral regimen works, then you, you, you should not change it. Is this true? Well, it depends, because uh, you, you may be aiming to different issues, improve adherence, maintain viral suppression and avoid resistance, reduce pill burden and, and dose infrequency, reduce tolerability and uh, uh, tolerability issues and toxicity issues, to avoid food or, or, or fluid requirements, as uh, some antiretroviral drugs carry, to reduce drug-drug interactions, to adapt the regimen to pregnancy, and to adapt the regimen to aging patients, which is part of our, our main task in, in, during these two days. And uh, last but not least, to reduce costs. And also, we, we may encounter in, a, in our patients uh, concerning laboratory values, long-term toxicity, again, simply a need to, to simplify, to adapt the regime to comorbidities, and in particular to adapt to, to some co-infections that are uh, uh, very, very frequent in some regions of, of the world, like uh, hepatitis B and C and, and TB. So, who should we switch? First of all, we, we need to ask ourselves how long has been our patient suppressed? And I will show you some examples of mistakes that we have done in, in, in some clinical trials in, in switching patients too, too early. Has the patient failed formal antiretroviral regimes? So the, the, the history of antiretroviral therapy is, is, is a main issue and it's is pretty important. And who is asking for the switch? Is the patient asking for, a, for, for the switch? Does he come to, to your clinic and says, doctor, I'm fed up with so many pills I want to change? Or, or the patient is perfectly good, but you try to be because you, you were at the last CROI or the last IAS conference and you saw a, a very nice switch study and said, let's move forward and, and switch. And maybe you, your, your patient doesn't want to, to do so. And uh, sometimes you have an urgent need. For instance, Valeria was the, the teaching us about, uh, about cancer. Obviously, if you are studying chemotherapy, sometimes you, you, you need to switch to drugs that have a, a, a very low impact in terms of drug drug interactions like ratagravir or, or dorotegravir. So the principles, uh, if we follow what, what the DHHS uh, is, is telling us in the latest update, you can see that we need to review the antiretroviral history for possible virological failure. We, we need to review if, uh, if we have available res formal resistant tests in order to see if there's uh, archived resistance. Uh, and in that particular case, be very careful uh, before you, you start switching because you, you can really ruin the uh, current uh, uh, successful regime. When you switch to, from boosted PI to another class, if you don't know the, the, the full history about resistance, you need to be very careful in this regard. And uh, eventually, if, if the case comes that, that you need to switch for any uh, given reason and you are not sure, what you can do is co uh, consult an expert. This is, this is very nice because the guidelines are written by experts and they, they tell us consult an expert. So they don't give us the, 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 the real answer, no? And uh, uh, the, the, probably the, the exemption for this is the, when, you, when, you, you, when you switch uh, inside the class. So you, you're using a PI and, and you switch to another PI and the patient is fully suppressed, then you shouldn't have a, a, any problem. You need to review the antiretroviral history for intolerance. Sometimes you switch back to, to, to a drug that the patient has been exposed to and the patient doesn't like it for, uh, because of the uh, uh, tolerability issues. The HLA, if you are considering Abacavir, and again, drug-drug interactions. And as, as I told you, different issues that have been discussed, some of them, and they are, they are very relevant for the aging po uh, population. Interesting, in this paper you can see that if your patient is switching because he had a side effect, then the, uh, the patients who switch due to treatment-related side effects has statistically significant improvement in mean physical and mental health summary scores. But patients who switch for other reasons, they don't experience any improvement. So this is a kind of issue of ethics in, in switching. There is a wonderful paper published uh, maybe four or five years ago by Tony Postiak in, in, in PLS Medicine, in which they, they were talking about the ethics of switching. 
That means if your patient doesn't need to switch, and there's no uh, uh, advantage for that, you have to think twice before you really proceed with switching. Now, this one. So let's, let's learn from, from, from our mistakes. This is a typical case of failure, the Switchmark study, in which patients that were undetectable, at least for three months, as you can see here, they were uh, randomized either to switch to raltegravir 400 milligrams BID and two nucleosides plus uh, uh, lopinavir ritonavir placebo, or patients continued in lopinavir ritonavir BID plus a placebo of raltegravir and two nucleosides. The primary endpoints uh, were related to lipid concentrations and proportion of patients with less than 50 copies at week 24. So this worked very good in terms of, uh, in terms of lipids. As you can see here, triglycerides, uh, non-HDL non cholesterol, etc. What you, what you see in blue is the advantage of the integrase inhibitor when compared to uh, protease inhibitors. But when you go to uh, viral suppression, even with nice numbers, 80% and 88% in Switchmark 1 and Switchmark 2 respectively, they, they, they couldn't show non-inferiority in regards to uh, the, the comparison to lopinavir ritonavir. So this strategy seemed to be dead, but with a, with a better design study, as you can see here, did by the Spanish group of Esteban Martinez and co-workers, here the patient had at least six months of uh, undetectable viral load, and they were uh, uh, checked in terms of uh, formal resistance, and patients were randomized again, either to switch to raltegravir plus two nukes or to continue their current regimen with a boosted PI and two, two nukes. And as you can see here, again, you see the advantages in terms of uh, lipids, triglycerides, etc., total cholesterol, uh, uh, LDL, and also the efficacy was good in terms of uh, maintaining viral suppression. So this is a very good example using exactly the same strategy with the difference is that you select the appropriate patients that you can have a failure or a success. Another uh, more recent example is the, the, the use of the co-formulation of uh, elvitegravir and uh, tenofovir FTC. And uh, in, in this part of the slide, you see here the, uh, the comparison with the ongoing boost API. There's non-inferior the strategy to, to, to switch to the integrase inhibitor. Here is in comparison to efavirenz. So both for PIs and for non-nucleosides, you can switch if you select the appropriate patients to, uh, uh, in this case, an elvitegravir covicistat based uh, regimen. No, I'm missing here. Okay. Then you have the striving study. In the striving study, uh, co-formulated dolutegravir, abacavir, and 3TC was compared to continuous antiretroviral therapy. Numbers are very similar, and don inferiority was shown, and with a very high satisfaction score for patients that were switched to a single ta tablet regimen. The, this is a list of, uh, uh, even if, he, if you can read here initially, it's only for, for switching therapy. And as you can see here, the, the two integrase inhibitors that have been tested for this type of uh, dual therapy uh, strategies are dolutegravir, either with baraviroc, atasaravir ritonavir, darunavir ritonavir, ilpivirin, or 3TC, or raltegravir with a, a travirin, 3TC, darunavir ritonavir in two different studies. And I will show you some, some examples of those studies. One is, one is the ASPIRE uh, study. Again, patients that were undetectable for at least six months without a history of, of resistance. And uh, you, you can see here that the numbers are pretty similar. The proportion of patients that achieved less than 50 copies at the, at the uh, pre predefined time point. Then you have uh, uh, the, the French study by Christine Catlama uh, using uh, etravirin and antiretravir. 160 patients. And, uh, and as you can see here in the, in the graph, the virological success at week 48 was 99.4%. So patients that switched from the, the, their current regimens to, to uh, the, this dual therapy with uh, raltegravir and etravirin, uh, almost 100% of them were uh, okay. One patient failed, interesting enough, they, uh, he selected uh, the uh, resistance to, to the non-nucleoside, but no, no resistance to raltegravir in this particular case. And the efficacy was maintained up to, uh, up to week 96. The, uh, the, the flip side of this strategy is etravirin, which is a, a very expensive drug, at least in many parts of, of the world, so, so the issue of cost will, would not be an advantage in this particular case. 
And as you can see here, when, when you look to, to other parameters, in, the, in this case, they are very relevant for the aging population, GFR, cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, non-HDL non cholesterol, triglycerides, and, and the ratio between triglycerides and, uh, and HDL, in all cases, are, uh, there are significant advantages for the dual therapy regimen, the exception being the uh, glucose levels, which didn't show any difference. So in terms of metabolic issues, this is, a, this is a strategy that you could consider in order to reduce cardiovascular risk in your patients. Then we have the RALAM study, which is, uh, again, a switch study in which a fixed dose combination of ratagravir and 3TC that was available in Europe, I, I don't know if it's still available here, but anyway, you can use those drugs in a, in, in a tuple regimen. Uh, patients were randomized either to continue or to, uh, in a two to one ratio, or to switch to raltegravir 3TC. And as you can see here, when you, when you go to the uh, intention to treat analysis, 80% of the patients in the control arm and 96% in the raltegravir 3TC arm uh, achieved less, less than 50 copies at week 24. Even if the others claim non-inferiority based on statistical management, I would say that, that the sample size is too, is too small in order to, to, to drive conclusions. I would say it's a pilot study, it's encouraging, it's nice, but I, I would be very, very careful to, to talk about non-inferiority in this particular case. And as you can see here, the interesting is that this was not driven because of, uh, of better tolerability. Because sometimes you, you, you can find that the regimen is, is uh, non-inferior or, or even superior based on tolerability, but this is not uh, the case. So the, 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 the hazard ratio for, uh, 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 in terms of adverse events was non-significantly uh, non different. Okay, so uh, I, I think the main conclusion is this, that these results support the viability of a well-powered randomized trial. So the authors acknowledge that non-inferiority should not be claimed in this particular case. There is now a rollover trial with uh, the new formulation of Raltegravir, the QD formulation, and is in progress. And uh, there's an, uh, another trial that could, uh, I could find in uh, clinicaltrials.gov, which is uh, the, the QD trial in which patients uh, are going to, to be switched to Raltegravir QD need to be patients in, uh, with non-detectable viral load in a stable regimen, one arm, 100 patients. Again, it will be a pilot study, will give us some information, not the definite one. Then we have well-powered studies like, uh, like the SWERT1 and SWERT2. Uh, remember that those were patients that were undetectable either on an integrase inhibitor-based regimen, non-nucleoside based or uh, API based, uh, in all cases with two nukes. Patients were randomized to continue or to uh, moved to the lutegravir plus real pivirin, and uh, the, 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 the study will, will last until week 148, uh, patients coming from different countries. And the primary endpoint is at week 48, proportion of patients in the intention to treat exposed uh, snapshot FDA analysis with less than 50 copies. And you don't need to be a statistician to understand that the results are exactly the same, 95 to 95%, and the confidence interval, as you can see here, Cross is zero, and it is below is below minus four. So uh, really, it it's uh, perfectly in 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 consistency with the uh, minus four plus four uh, limits of for the ninety five percent confidence interval that the FDA now requires for the switch study. So this uh, this particular study uh, was was the driver for for the approval of the combined fixed dose combination of the lutegravir and ribavirin that uh, I, I learned that is already approved by the, by the EMA here in Europe, not still launched in, in, in all the countries, at least not, not in Spain, I, I have been told. So, uh, what about uh, integration inhibitors of monotherapy? There was so, such an enthusiasm with the Loterior 3 tc As you know, we have presented the, the results of the Gemini trial, the Loterior plus 3 tc compared to triple therapy based on the Lutegravir, recently at the wonderful Amsterdam conference. And uh, some people said, well, okay, let's try dolutegravir in monotherapy. Uh, uh, we saw some studies with good results, some studies with bad results. But the, the, the problem is the high rate of resistance selection in the integrase gene in the case of virological failure. And as you can see, there is a list of mutations that have been selected in, the, in different trials that you see the reference here in the, in the bottom of the slide. So I, I think that we can now uh, 
clear and loud say that doloterga and monotherapy not only should not be used, but it should only uh, should also not be tested. Furthermore, as a strategy for uh, patients that are uh, undetectable, because the 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 price that, that, that you pay by selecting this resistant mutation is, is extremely high. What about street strategies for uh, failing patients? Well, we have to go back uh, in, the, in the old times, in the first study that showed that an integrase inhibitor could work, and this is the benchmark. It's nice to see that at that time, patients that were failing to uh, nucleosides, non-nucleosides, and PIs, almost without hope, when Altero came across, we, we, we could get a fantastic almost 70% efficacy if, we, if you, in, in the optimized background regimen, you, you, you could select another drug on top of, of, of raltegravir. So this, this was the first time in which we could see that the integrase inhibitors could, could work. Now we have, obviously, much more drugs. Uh, another study that was uh, basically done in, in developing countries in which lopinavir, ritonavir is is the uh, used to be used to be until 2018 the uh, preferred drug by WHO uh, as a recommendation for patients failing in, in first line. Uh, they did a, a triple arm study in which they compared lopinavir ritonavir monotherapy in green. You can see that failed, and two strategies based on lopinavir ritonavir: one with raltegravir and the other one with two or three nucleosides. So you can read this study in two ways. You could say, okay, that's great. Lopinavir ritonavir plus, plus raltegravir is as good as lopinavir ritonavir uh, plus two nukes. You could also say, why do I need raltegravir if I can do the job with, with, with two nukes? But anyway, uh, it's another example that uh, dual therapy uh, could, could uh, work in the, in the context of uh, uh, failing patients. Then you have the, the, the Dolling study that compared uh, in a direct manner lopinavir ritonavir versus the dolutegravir in both cases with two nucleosides. And here, it's not only non-inferior, but also superior, as you can see, because the lower bound of the 95% confidence interval does not cross zero. So the superiority was shown in the Donning study that was also recently presented in Amsterdam. So what do the, the HHS guidelines tell us about switching? Well, uh, you, you, can, you can switch within class, as I said, without a, a major problem. We, if you are switching between classes, again, uh, if, if no drug resistance exists to, to new regimen components, you can do it safely. Switching to two drug regimens, so far the DHHS only recommends either return over boosted PI plus 3TC, as, as it has been shown in, in several trials, like the, like the OLE study and the JESIDA dual, uh, dual trial, both uh, performed here, here in Spain. And the, uh, it's quoted as a reasonable option where, uh, when Abacavir, TAF, or TDF are contraindicated or undesirable. Dolutegravir will be in QD based on the source study that they showed you, and I, I, I assume that shortly Dolutegravir 3TC will also be part of these recommendations. And then some supporting evidence for switching to two drug regimens, ritonavir boosted, darunavir plus raltegravir, are by the efficacy. Here, the DHHS says it's only examined in treated naive patients, which is true in terms of randomized clinical trials. But there, there is a, a, an increasing amount of evidence in small trials with 100, 150 patients that show that this is probably a good strategy to, to pursue. Most important is what you, you should not do. You should not uh, uh, switch patients to uh, boosted PI or integrase inhibitors monotherapy, particularly integrase inhibitors monotherapy. For boosted PIs, you, you may consider in some particular cases, but the question is, why not add 3DC and be on the safe side? Dolotegravir monotherapy, as I said, should not be used. We tested also, uh, as other groups, the combination of atazanavir uh, boosted and unboosted with, with raltegravir and didn't work. Maravirog, Maravirog plus boosted PI didn't work either, and Maravirog plus raltegravir is, is also contraindicated. Uh, to, fina to, to finalize the, uh, a couple of slides on new strategies in, the, in development, one is the long-acting uh, new kit in the block uh, of the integrase inhibitors, cabotegravir. It's an injectable drug that is also available in, in an oral form uh, formulation. And as you can see here, they compared uh, cabotegravir plus abacavir 3TC orally 
and uh, the, um, this, the, the, this was the regimen that patients received for the first 24 weeks, and after that, the patients were switched either to continue or switched to intramuscular cabotegravir and rilpivirin every eight weeks or every four weeks. And as you can see here, the, the, the results, the, the, the best performance was for uh, every, every two months injection. So we are in the, in the verge of seeing a, a completely new era of long-acting treatments in which based on, on the potency and the, and the safety and uh, good tolerability of, of these types of, of drugs, uh, is, is opening uh, really a new window in the, in, in the field. Uh, nevertheless, we need to see uh, what, what our patients think, and this is a, a paper presented at Croy this year, in which patients were asked, would you uh, move to a single pill taken once a week? Would you move to two shots given in, in the clinic every other month, as we have shown in the, in the latest study? or two small plastic implants. You remember the implants that many ladies have for contraception. Well, uh, uh, I know at least that three companies are working on, on those type of implants that you could change every six months. As you can see, at least in this, in this poll, uh, the, the most popular f uh, form of new delivery uh, of uh, antiretroviral therapy is a single week taken once a week. So two thirds of the population said that this would be the the, the preferred uh, switch, but more than one third would go to the clinic every other month to get a shot. So it, uh, I think that the, uh, uh, as long as, uh, as we show more evidence and it's, it becomes more popular, not for everybody, but for many patients, DOT, direct ob observed treatment, could be a, a good chance. And if we think uh, about our aging population, which have, uh, as we learned today, a lot of neurocognitive disorders. They may forget, they may uh, not show up, they may they might be sick and, uh, and not, not being able to come to the clinic, etc. It could be a, 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 an interesting strategy for treating patients with dementia or with uh, cognitive disorders. So, uh, just to recap, uh, remember that you can switch to improve adherence, to reduce the pill burden, uh, burden to reduce tolerability and, and toxicity, to avoid food requirements, reduce drug-drug interactions, and to adapt the regimen to the different situations in which we see our patients, particularly aging patients, and again, to reduce cost. And you can do so if your patient wants to switch or you have very compelling medical reasons to, to, to do so. Uh, it's, it's nothing wrong to keep a patient 10 years in the, with, with the same treatment if your patient is undetectable. So don't, don't, don't feel pushed that you, you need to switch because this is, this is fashion and, and contemporary. Uh, is, the, is the potency preserved? Uh, I think this is the most important question. When you are going to switch, is the new regime as potent as the, uh, as the one that, that you are uh, leaving aside? Uh, again, take care of, uh, of your uh, patient uh, previous failures and, and our resistance. Take at least six months of the, uh, to be on the safe side. And uh, the longer the, the, the time your patient was undetectable, the safer the regimen will be. Have you considered potential drug interactions? And again, is your recommendation cost effective? If so, you can switch. So thank you very much for your attention.